What's up friends? If you're a photo or video editor, you've probably seen this thing pop up in your feed. I know I have, and I've always kind of been curious about getting one. And a lot of my friends who edit photo and video swear by these. So I'm excited to show you guys what this can do and what it's all about. So this is the Tourbox Elite Plus, and it looks a lot like a video game controller, except it's not. It's a lot more dense. Uh, it feels heavy. It's not gonna slide around on the desk. And I got it here in this kind of a clear, transparent colorway. They have it in a couple other different colorways, but I think it looks really nice with my silver and black Magic Keyboard. It kind of matches it. And it's just a bunch of combination of dials and buttons, and they all feel really nice. They're nice and clicky, actually. All right, I'm taking the mic off. Listen to this. So the Tourbox pretty much works in any creative app. We're gonna take a look at it in Lightroom today, uh, but I have been using it in DaVinci Resolve and I've been loving it for that as well. But there's some issues with Lightroom that this kind of solves and it might not even be something you thought of, but if you've ever worked on a laptop, like today we're working on a bigger screen, but say you've worked on a small laptop, like a 14 inch MacBook, you know how much space these panels take up in Lightroom Classic. And so with the Tourbox, you can actually hide these tabs or hide these panels. I'm gonna get rid of all the the panel so it's basically just full screen. So the cool thing with the toolbox is I have it set up right now to do full navigation so zoom in and scroll so if we hold the side wheel in here we can scroll in and then while still holding the side button down we can go left and right with the knob and then we can go up and down with this other wheel here as well. So you can pretty much navigate around your image like that you can zoom in zoom out. Now obviously you can do that with your mouse and the shortcuts but I didn't have to touch anything except the toolbox and the cool thing is this also has haptic feedback so you can feel every notch that you're moving to with precision. Uh, to bring up our main basic panel, it's the up arrow here. And as you can see, it brings up the panel. And the cool thing is you can move this around so it doesn't have to stay here. You can put it over here, you can move it over here. And you're probably seeing this crosshair as well. And this is kind of just a reminder to know what these buttons do. So as I said, the basic panel is up. If we want to go to tone, we can click the down button and it switches over the panel there. And then we've got the color mixer on that. And if you hit it again, it goes away. So I customized this a little bit different. So the main knob is actually our exposure. So the things that I would have to change most often on an edit, so the exposure is here. And if we hold down the tall button while holding the knob, we can change our contrast as well. So you can customize this up to do whatever you want. So one other really cool thing is I set my tall button to bring up the preset panel. And this is just my classic ports presets. You can set it to do whatever presets you want, but these are the ones I use most often. And with the scroll wheel here, we can cycle through the different presets. So say I wanted to make this black and white, we hit that and then we hit this little half moon shape. And that's gonna apply the preset to the image. Now, if we wanna undo that, we've got our uh, C1, C2 button. So C1 is gonna take it back out because I'm just gonna show you what it's like to bring up the basic panel again. So in here we can control our temperature, so we wanna warm it up. And then the scroll wheel actually moves it down to the next option. And so uh, say we wanna add a little bit more magenta, the exposure we could bring up a tiny bit. Um, we could bring the highlights down. Basically anything you would do in the main panel if it was up, but you can do it all from the tour box. So one thing I do often is mask my subject when I'm making adjustments. And the cool thing is you can actually do that with this. Um, and I got that set up to the short button. It's just gonna make a subject mask right out the gate. So I just tap that, boom, subject mask. It's already on the subject. I didn't have to do anything else. And we can go in here and make all of our adjustments. So if we wanna bring up our exposure just on the model, we can do that. Um, again, basically all the same adjustments that you would get inside of Lightroom with the normal panels. Well, we're in Lightroom, but uh, we're using the dynamic panel that the tour box brings up. So let's jump to another shot here. And this specific image, we've got some hair in front of the face and stuff, so we might want to change that. Um, I'm gonna scroll in here and just kind of show you what I'm talking about because uh, these are Hasselblad files. They're 100 megapixels. This is the uh, 907X with the 100C back on it. And so we got tons of detail to work with here. So I'm gonna hold the top button down here and you can see over in the right here, we've got uh, spot removal, radiant filter, adjustment brush, and graduated filter. So we're just gonna work with the spot removal. So holding the top button and then pushing up on the keypad here, um, it opens up our healing tool. And with the scroll wheel, we can actually change the size of the brush. I'm gonna keep it quite small here because we're doing some fine detail. And then just like you would, you just paint in here with the healing tool and it's gonna remove those little hairs. Oh yeah, and this spot on the ear here, and maybe this spot here. Now I kinda of wanna keep the hairs across her face here because it was windy and it kinda of adds the vibe, right? So I did notice a spot on her cheek here, 
and uh, we'll just tap that in there and then we tap and then we can close that back out. So, so far I haven't even really had to touch the mouse, which is pretty dope. We could do all this off the tour box. Uh, you know what, just for the heck of it, let's bring up the presets. So we're tapping the tall button here and as you can see, it brings up my list of classic port presets. Uh, let's do CN1 and then we hit the half moon. Boom, preset applied. Now I wanna make some adjustments here. I wanna warm it up a little bit. Um, it's also kind of dark and we need to lift the shadows a little bit. Now, obviously you could memorize all your keyboard shortcuts and do it that way, but it's pretty cool doing it off the tour box. Now, I don't know if I mentioned this or not. Obviously some tools don't have shortcuts. Uh, if we pop over the presence here, like clarity, dehaze and texture, none of that stuff is on a shortcut. So to have it on the tour box here, so say when we want, we want to add a little bit more texture. Um, I'm not a big fan of clarity. I would actually <laughs> not touch it at all, to be honest. And then we have our saturation and vibrance here. Now, one cool thing uh, that I haven't even shown yet is that you actually have the ability to do a bit of rotation. Um, not the full crop, but you can do a bit of rotation here. So holding the top button and the knob, say we, we wanted to straighten out the image, like say the horizon was off a bit, we can do that. Now, obviously it's, <laughs> we didn't really need to do it because I already took it straight, but if your image was off, you could do it with this. You punch right in there, right on our eye. <laughs> it's so close. Uh, really sharp though, but I have to go in and clean everything up. Anyway, that's kind of just a quick look at what it's like to use in Lightroom and like getting all this screen real estate back without needing the panels. Once you figure out how to use this and got it dialed in to how you like it, you could probably edit pretty quick with this thing. And so I feel like it's one of those things where once you have it, you can't really go without it. Now it's super easy to connect the tour box. It's got a little Bluetooth switch on the bottom here. Uh, you just turn that to green and then hold the pairing button and it connects. All right, so taking a look at the tour box console here, I haven't talked about it yet. This is where you customize the tour box as well as import your presets and change your presets. So here you can see they've got pre-made presets already for Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere, Capture One, Final Cut Pro, DaVinci, CapCut. You can set up your own presets as well. I've got a custom one down here for Resolve. Um, let's go to Lightroom Classic though, and then to the Develop tab here. And as you can see, this is what I have set up already for everything. So as I mentioned before, you've got your basic panel, your tone, your presence on the D-pad here. So if we go to the knob here, you can see these are all the different settings you can add for that knob dial. You can also go over here and type in your shortcut as well. So if you know the keyboard shortcut for it, you can add that. Um, and then over here, you can make your own custom macro as well, which is really cool. And uh, these aren't set. So you can actually set a ton of different custom presets. You can also export them. You can import them and then save your new presets. So that's pretty much just a quick rundown of what it's like in the tour box console. Now, the other cool thing is this also works with iPad. Now, I don't know if all the other tour boxes work with iPad, but the tour box elite plus also works with iPad. I'm using it in DaVinci Resolve, using it in Lightroom. And the cool thing is this gives you a tactile experience that you don't really get with an iPad where you would normally want to try and pair up your, your mouse and keyboard if you wanted to get that kind of experience, but you don't need to, you could use this and the pen and you're pretty much rocking with an iPad. And so this is actually really good with iPad. It also comes with this uh, travel case. Um, it's actually a really nice travel case, nice soft texture material. And uh, yeah, if you wanna travel with this thing with your iPad, you got this or your laptop, you just drop this in the case. Boom, it's like a little lunchbox. So after spending a couple weeks with this thing and getting it all dialed in, I actually love using this. And if you're the type of person that likes macros, like customizing things and using different shortcuts, this is definitely for you. It's definitely better than like a stream deck because you can dial it in, you got custom knobs and stuff like that. And again, it, it has that kind of game controller vibe, but it's definitely much better than that. And you've got the precision scroll wheels and it's just enjoyable to use. Now it's not gonna replace your keyboard or mouse. You still will need your keyboard for a few things, but for the most part, you can do it all off this because you have combo buttons, you've got all the regular buttons, and then you've got like multiple combo buttons, which is really cool. And then again, in Lightroom, it brings up separate panels with other settings. So you can really do a lot just with this. And uh, yeah, if you wanna find this thing, I'll have a link in the description where you can find it. Uh, it's pretty dope. If you have any questions on this, don't hesitate to throw them down in the comment section. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. See you guys in the next one.